Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to take this photo and make this animation from it. Okay, let's create a new composition and we're just gonna call this mountain. Okay, 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second and 10 seconds is good. I've got my mountain image right here. So let's go ahead and drag that in. And now if you right click on this image and go to transform fit comp to height, I have FX console. If you don't have that, I highly recommend that you get it. So I'm gonna use that just because it's a lot quicker. It's a free download. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm looking for curves. First, I just wanna kinda of add a little bit of contrast to this to kinda of get a look that is going to work. Duplicate this layer. We can take off the curves and then I wanna add in a tint and then let's add in fast box blur. And I'm gonna increase the fast box blur up to 400. So it's really, really blurred out. Actually, we'll put that curves back in, but we're gonna make it a lot more contrasty and a lot more bright. So After Effects is gonna use these hues of black and white to get the distortion that we need. Pre-compose that, and we're gonna call this Map. Okay, and we can turn that layer off. And so now I want to separate the foreground from the background. This is a trick I do quite a bit. First, let's go ahead and pre-compose this. We're gonna call this Mountain Front. Okay, and we'll go into this pre-comp here. And so I wanna use the entire image. So as you can see, it goes off camera. So I'm gonna pull up my settings here and the width, let's make this 3350. So I'm gonna use a roto brush, but before I do that, hit in, we can bring our handle over. We want this to be a one frame comp here. Let's grab our roto brush, which is right here. Double click on our JPEG. First, let's just do a sweep across the whole thing. And just make sure you get all of these areas. So we wanna cover this entire mountain range. Some of these areas in here. And then you're gonna to wanna to zoom in if you're using this image. I got this image from Envato Elements, but you can use any image you'd like. If you happen to go off of this mountain, you can actually hold down Alt and then it brings up the negative roto brush. So that way you can erase that mistake right there. So this is our foreground. Let's go back out to our main comp. Right click and then choose Reveal Source in Project. So we'll close this up so we have this mountain front. Let's duplicate that and call this mountain back. Okay, so we can duplicate this layer and then holding down Option, drag mountain back on top. And actually it probably makes sense to put this underneath. So let's go into mountain back now. What we're gonna do is click on this layer and we have our roto brush right here. So we wanna just see the sky. So the way we do that, there's this option right here. It says invert foreground and background. Just click on that. And so now we have our foreground and we have our background. Okay, so I wanna move the sky. And if you pull up P for position, if you start to move it, you have this mask back there. Turn on transparency. If you look at our original image and hit S for scale, you can see we're scaled down to 58%. So we have some room to kind of adjust this. So I'm going to increase my scale maybe to 165. And then that's gonna give me some freedom to kind of move this thing around. It's gonna pull down. And I just wanna be able to animate this over 10 seconds. So put a keyframe and pull it over till the mask is right, right there. Basically, we're just trying to hide that mask. Oh, and let's go ahead and take these two layers, right click, time, freeze frame. That way they go all the way out. Uh, so P for position, and we want to just move this so that way we get some movement on our clouds. It's completely up to you how fast you want these clouds to move. Okay, and then with this mountain back, I'm going to add in fast box blur. Add like a three pixel blur. So it's a little bit out of focus like that. So let's add in an adjustment layer. We're going to call this displace. Okay, so select that layer, displacement map. Displacement map is going to be obviously our map. Luminance on both of these. Stretch map to fit. And then wrap pixels. This is where all the magic happens. So let's increase this horizontal displacement to 150. Put a keyframe on 150 and 5. Hit U to bring up our keyframes. And then go to the very end. Make this horizontal, we'll say negative 200 now. Make our vertical 
10. This is what's going to sell the 3D look. And you can already tell just by adding this already that we're getting a 3D look to this photograph. This can all be done right inside of After Effects, which is super cool. I'm going to decrease this for now down to quarter quality. Add in a new camera and then add in a new null object. We want actually everything to be 3D because we want even our displacement map and the map itself to move with the camera. And we're going to take this camera and parent it up to our null. We just call that cam control. I'm going to go ahead and start color coding these so it doesn't get too far out of hand. Bring up our position, put a keyframe right there at the beginning, go to the end, and let's move in about 400 pixels. Animate our rotation. So X and Y rotation will make Y 5 make x negative three go to the very end y negative five x two then i'm also going to put a wiggle expression on position so that way it has a slight movement okay so we watch that play back and we see we have something that looks even cooler did you notice at the very beginning that there was this space right here that's showing up so let's go ahead and correct that hold down shift and s during up our scale i'm going to put a keyframe there and the way the camera control works the sizing goes in the opposite direction 95 she's still not quite there we'll see 94 go to the very end scale 100. okay so now i want to add in that snow and we're going to be using particle world and there are some settings that are super complicated to come up with on the fly so i do have these written down previously and i'm going to walk you through that as we go through this i always uncheck all this because it just gets in the way so we want our birth rate to be two longevity to be four let's open up our particle we want the particle to be a faded sphere birth rate 0.5 death rate is going to be 0.1 size variation i have that set to 100 percent and then we want to make these colors here white these are the settings i have for birth size, death size, size variation, and then for the particle type, faded sphere, birth rate, and longevity. Okay, let's make some more changes. We're going here to physics, twirly, and the velocity, 0.03, gravity, 0.08, and resistance, 0.5. So there are those settings for our physics. We go up to producer, 0.03 for the position X, position Y, negative 0.33. For the radius, I have three one and five so those are our settings for our producer okay i'm gonna change this back to full quality and i'm just going to solo this layer to see what we're working with get it back to a black background and we watch it play back and we have something that looks kind of like that not completely what i'm going for but we can make a few more changes to get the look that we need so i believe it's under the particle settings yeah we want the birth size to be 0 0.05 like that so yeah so those are a little bit smaller and we don't need to make this layer 3D because it's already going to be interacting in a 3D kind of way here. So, but let's do pull this underneath our display so it's affected by the displace. So if we bring that up, we can see that the displacement is affecting it. And we can increase this a little bit, maybe to 105. Okay, so let's add in an adjustment layer. I'm going to call this CC for color correction. Call up Lumetri. And then under creative, SL clean slate NDR. Let's add in the curves. Pull the brightness down on the high end so we can see our sky a little bit better. Punch this up just a little bit. And then one more effect, hue for hue and saturation. I'm just going to increase my saturation to about 35. So there's a little bit more color in there. Let's create a solid. We're going to call this vignette. I'm going to make this black. Double click our ellipse tool here. We want to subtract that mask and hit MM. So we'll go 350, we'll make our mask opacity 40. Adjust this to get a look I think that's going to work. Okay, and then let's create another adjustment layer. I'm going to call this blur. We want to look for a fast box blur. Increases to 10 pixels. And again, we're going to take our ellipse tool, double click, mask, subtract, MM. For feather, let's make this about 350. Now, one thing is you're going to want to do with the snow layer, which is going to be this right here. Let's just name this snow. As Ben Marriott says, we always label our layers. Bring this layer over so that way the snow is already populating in our scene. 
I'm going to make our snow maybe a little bit lighter so that way it kind of blends in a little bit better. So select snow, T for opacity, and maybe we'll make this like 75. Now in the example, I had a lens flare. I don't normally do this, but just to show you in case you have optical flares, I'm going to add in a quick optical flare. I tried to do this with the built-in lens flare that After Effects has, and it's just not quite the same. Uh, of course, it doesn't compare to the optical flares from Video Copilot. I'm just going to place this over in our corner, and I want to make this source. We're going to make this 3D. Open up our options here, and I believe the one that I used was a natural flare, and it had this ring. I believe it's this one right here. Pull this up. Here's our flicker setting right here. We'll say 15, 45. And again, if you don't have optical flares, you can try to use the lens flare that's built in naturally with After Effects. There are a few elements to it that I'm not crazy about. I just wanted to show you how I did this all within After Effects. Everything can be done here. There's no need to go outside of After Effects. You can get really, really cool look. And I hope you learned something and thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial helped you out and that you learned something new and useful. Make sure to come back next time for another tutorial that will expand your knowledge of After Effects while also teaching you some really cool tips, tricks, and shortcuts. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And click the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Support our channel by getting your 7-minute AE merch today at our online store. And sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, is guaranteed to make you a Shape Layer Rockstar. The link to that course, to our 7-Minute AE store, and the project files for this episode are all in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.